Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to model one indeterminate beam with the degree of one and to check how we can apply the loads and also how to determine the maximum bending moment in one span considering favorable and unfavorable actions. Suppose we have a beam with the length of 2L, two spans under the distributed load of Q, that can be GK and also Q1, for example, QK. G representing the self-made and dead load and Q as one single live load. Now, in the first glance, assume that we are interested in the maximum bending moment between A and B supports. Uh, if the load is distributed in two spans, the maximum bending moment is not in the center of AB. And we'll see it will be in the 3 over 8 of L from point A and the same from point C. But when it comes to the worst uh, live load appearance, assuming that the permanent action is not uh, critical to be considered for superior and inferior, then we have only one GK which can be in the superior as unfavorable and also inferior for the most favorable case. But when it comes to the live load, the effect of live load being in two spans would affect the maximum bending moment in one span. For uh, analyzing this beam, you can use different methods. For example, force method can be one, um, a slope deflection or any other kind might be appropriate. So what we can do for the entire load applied to the section, I use superposition method. I sketch one beam, A, C, and this is point B under Q plus the other beam with the reaction force of RB. Based on the tables, uh, that you can find easily here and there. The deflection in the center of a beam under distributed load of Q will be 5Q L power by 4 divided by 384. And for a beam with the length of 2L with a point load in the center, this deflection will be force times length power by 3 divided by 48 EI this one as well. As far as in the main beam, the deformation at point B is zero, meaning that delta B1 downward should be the same as delta B2 upward. As a result, 5Q 2L power by 4 divided by 384 EI equals to RB times 2L power by 3 divided by 48 EI. As a result, reaction at point B will be 5QL over 4, or 10QL divided by 8. If we have the support reaction in the center, then easily we can find out the other reactions as far as it's completely symmetrical. So this will be 10QL divided by 8, and this is Q, the total value of the force. So AY and CY are the same, AY equals to CY, and it will be Q times 2L minus 10QL divided by 8 divided by 2. 3QL divided by 8. And then we can sketch here for some bending moment for this beam. As I said, you can use any other methods for this calculation. 3QL over 8, and then it comes to 5QL over 8. Now, to sketch the bending moment diagram, we just need to calculate the area of shear force or shear diagram. This is 3 over 8L and the rest 5 over 8L. The area for the first part will be 9 over 128QL square. And here it will be 25 divided by 128QL square. The same value for the other sides. And now we can sketch the bending moment diagram. In the beginning, this is uh, the bending moment is zero. It comes to nine over 128 QL square, and then minus 25 will be minus 16. 
QLS squared divided by 128, which is QLS squared divided by 8. The same in the other side, 9 over 128 QLS squared. So this is for the distributed load, and we can see that it is 9 QL divided by 128, which is not in the center, it is in the distance of 3 over 8A. So this can be used for a permanent action when the structure is not sensitive to the permanent load. But when it comes to live load, the position of live load would affect the maximum bending moment. If it is coming in two spans, then it is favorable because uh, it is reducing the maximum bending moment. As a result, when we are interested in finding out the maximum bending moment, especially for live load, the position of live load is very important, If especially if the a structure is complicated. Uh, for many structures, when the, um, the beams are simply supported on columns, on core wells, perhaps this is not relevant. But when it comes to complicated structures, then this is very important uh, factor for finding the maximum bending moment. Now we can go to applying the load only on one span. Assume that the load is applied only on one span here. A span AB and the other one is without any uh, load. So for analyzing this beam we can use different methods for example slope deflection or other methods here I'm going to use the uh, combination of a direct and indirect symmetric principle. So every a structure if they are symmetric based on their uh, appearance regardless of the load, can be written as the summation of two different beams. For example, here I can write it down that this is one beam with the load of Q divided by 2, plus the same beam, Q divided by 2 on one span, and minus Q divided by 2 on the other span. If you use superposition, you can see that AB in total will be under Q, and BC will be under zero load they are balancing each other for the first one we have the solution already for bending moment from the previous calculation except the uh, load is half so it will be in the distance of 3 over 8 l and this value was 9 q l divided by 128 which here will be 256 because it is q over 2 you can write it down this way 9q divided by 2l divided by 128. So this will be 9ql divided by 256. The same happens to the other half, 9ql divided by 256. For the other structure, the deformation will be this way. This structure is called reverse uh, symmetric, meaning that the structure itself is symmetric and the loading on the structure is uh, in the opposite direction. So if you have such a situation, then in the center of symmetrical point, bending moment will be zero. As a result, you can easily find out that the system is a simple beam which the maximum bending moment will be ql square divided by 8 which is ql square divided by 16 and it will happen in the center also the reaction force at point b in this case will be zero and here rb was based on our calculation earlier 10 ql over 8 10 ql over 8 so it will be rb in this case will be 10 ql divided by 16 and rb here will be 0 and now if you sum these two together you will have the support reaction at point b you have load only on one span so this will be 10 ql divided by 16 plus 0 so it will be 5 ql divided by 8 and now you can simply take the moment and find out cy and ay sigma m about a equals 0 ql times l divided by 2 
minus 5QL divided by 8 times L minus CY times 2L equals 0. CY will be 1 over 2 minus 5 over 8 times QL divided by 2. So it will be minus QL divided by 16. So this uh, value will be QL divided by 16. I prefer to write this down as 10 QL over 16. Now sigma FY equals 0. AY minus QL plus 10 QL divided by 16 minus QL divided by 16 equals 0. As a result, AY will be 1 minus 10 over 16 plus 1 over 16 times QL. 16 minus 10, 7 QL divided by 16. And now we have the support reactions. We can sketch the shear force and bending moment diagram. Now we can sketch the shear force and bending moment for this half loaded beam 7 QL divided by 16 and then 1 QL is reduced. So here it will be 9 QL divided by 16 and then it will be plus 10 which is 1 QL divided by 16 and finally it will be 0. This length will be 7 divided by 16 L and the other one will be 9 divided by 16 L. Now we need to calculate the area of each part. So here it will be 49 QL square divided by 512. The other part will be 81 QL square divided by 512, which is negative. And this is QL square divided by 16. Bending moment will be 0 and then it will go to 49 QL square divided by 512 and minus 81, 49 minus 81 will be minus 32 and then here we have a line and 32 divided by 512, 512 divided by 32 will be 16 which is QL square divided by 16 which is the same value and it will be 0. Now, if we compare this uh, bending moment diagram of the beam, which is under a load only in one span, with the first one that we calculated for the load to be on both spans, and if we want to have the same denominator of this 9 over 128, it will be 36 QL square divided by 512. Here we can see that uh, if we have the load only in one span, the maximum bending moment is higher than when we have the uh, maximum uh, when we have the load in two spans. As a result, if we want to uh, sketch this beam for the most unfavorable bending moment in a span AB, and assuming that the uh, structure is not sensitive to the permanent load. So if most unfavorable case is M between DC positive bending moment or the maximum bending moment, then it means that we go with the GK superior and we apply the live load only on a span AB. And uh, you can simply first guess what would be the worst case scenario and then apply the load. And if you are interested in the inferior value or most favorable action on MBC. So MBC minimum will be based on GK inferior and Q should be applied to the other span. For calculation uh, of the maximum bending moment, you can sketch the beam and analyze the beam according to this uh, with the proper partial factor for example this can be 1.15 gk superior and this can be 1.5 qk and here this can be 1.5 qk and this can be 0.9 gk inferior if you are interested in uh, reasonable approximation you can take the bending moment from each location even though they are not exactly in the same position here we can see that it is in the distance of 7 over 16 L and this was in the distance of 3 over 8 times L. So they are not uh, in the same location, but it can have a good uh, approximation. Let's have some numerical values here. 
let's assume gk is 10 kilonewton per meter and q is 20 kilonewton per meter with the length of let's say six meters so for calculation of the most unfavorable action on bc so it will be 1.15 or most unfavorable 1.15 times 9 times 10 kilonewton per meter times 6 meters power by 2 divided by 128 plus 1.5 times the other one was 49 49 times 20 kilonewton per meter times uh, 6 meters power by 2 divided by 512 and it will be 132.5 kilonewton meter for the most favorable action if we come back to here we can assume this this beam is symmetrical so we can assume that we are combining this maximum positive and then this negative value from the live load to be in the other span it's the same here uh, in the support both are negative and gradually this uh, live load effect is reduced the bending moment due to live load is reduced but on the other hand for the self weight and dead load it is increased to 9 over 128 ql square so the maximum might happen somewhere here between the uh, the load the maximum load and then the effect of live load uh, non, 9 over 128 ql square times 0 0.9 might be reasonable to be assumed excluding the effect of the live load in the other span if you are interested in maximum positive bending moment that is one solution the other one is just calculating for this point but perhaps it would be zero or even negative which might not affect your design because you have maximum negative in the support uh, we can try and in the next video I'm going to solve the same question with RFM that we can see how it looks like. So let's uh, go with the value. The distance between these two is 3 over 8 L. As a result, I'm interested in this value, which is in the distance of 3 over 8 L. So the value will be 3 over 8 times QL square divided by 16 and it's negative. If you want to be very accurate, then you need to solve this uh, this beam. So here it will be 0 0.9 times 9QL square divided by 128 plus 1.5 times 3 over 8Q negative L square divided by 16. So it will be minus 2.53. Remember this minus 2.53 would happen somewhere here. And as far as the bending moment is still positive for the uh, dead load and the effect of negative bending moment due to live load on the other span is decreased, perhaps in the accurate calculation we have some uh, positive values here. That's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. In the next video, I will model the same with the RPM and we will go through how to activate uh, favorable action on a simple a uh, beam like this one and we will compare the results thank you for watching see you next time bye